Okay. Uh, okay. So, any questions about IP set? Yeah. Uh, so, how integrity is protected in IP set? I mean, that uh, ESP model. How is what? Integrity protected. How do you mean? How is it protected? So, in AS more, we use uh, some header fields for integrity check, right? No. Uh, no. The integrity check is uh, computed and stored somewhere, right? And then you check it at the other end. The difference is that in AH, you apply the integrity check to some fields of the header as well as all of the data. In ESP, you just, just apply the integrity check to the data. Yeah. And it's a symmetric key, you know, so you do the integrity check using a, a Mac, right? Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, okay, Kerberos, uh, the next protocol. Um, yeah, okay, what is Kerberos? Does anybody know? Dictionary definition? What is it? Yeah, it's a three-headed dog in, in Greek mythology that guards the entrance to Hades, right? The entrance to hell. Uh, and there it is. Three-headed dog, snakes on the head and everything. Um, I was Cerebus. Uh, no, I don't think so. I actually looked this up. It's Kerberos. <laughs> um, okay, so Kerberos. Um, and um, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. So again, according to some other authors, um, you know, their comment is, uh, wouldn't it make more sense to guard the exit as opposed to the entrance? <laughs> Uh, okay, there's a protocol that was developed at MIT and it's called the Needham Schroeder Protocol. Uh, Kerberos is just a variation on that, a few modifications to it, uh, and you get Kerberos. Now, Kerberos is very widely used. It's available in Windows, and so it's, uh, you know, it's ubiquitous. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, it's not designed, you know, SSL and IPsec are really designed for sort of internet-wide sort of deployment, right? This is not, okay? It's something you would use on your local network to protect traffic there. Uh, it's different from those other guys because it uses symmetric keys uh, and it also uses timestamps, okay? Now, when we use symmetric keys, we don't have to worry about a public key infrastructure. That's good, right? No PKI, okay? That's good, but there's no free lunch. So we have something here we'll call a trusted third party, TTP, which sort of plays that role, okay? So it has to be functioning properly, it has to be trusted, we have to rely on it, okay? If it doesn't do the right thing, the whole thing breaks down. Uh, okay, now just kind of a warning here about Kerberos. Um, this protocol is really not that complex, okay? But when we talk about it, we have a ton of acronyms, <laughs> okay? TTP, right? Okay, we're just getting warmed up here. If you can sort of keep the acronyms all straight in your mind, the protocol itself is really not uh, not too complicated. It's kind of clever. There's some clever uh, bits here. Okay, so now there's a basic problem. Um, if you're trying to authenticate based on public keys, now I want to set up a system where I have end users, say everybody in the class, and I want anybody to be able to mutually authenticate anybody else. Okay, now if I'm using public keys, what do we have to do to make that work? Well, I've got to have a public-private key pair. You've got to have one. You've got to, everybody's got to have their own public-private key pair. As long as that's satisfied, you've got your own certificates, we're good to go. Anybody can authenticate anybody else. Okay, so N users, there's N key pairs, and we're good. Now how about symmetric keys? I want anybody to be able to authenticate anybody else. That means I have to share a key with everybody in the room. You have to share a key with everybody in the room, and you have to share a key. How many keys is that? It's like n choose two, roughly n squared, you know, so it's growing like n squared. Well, that's pretty bad if you have a billion users, right? Okay. So, it, you know, it doesn't scale if you use symmetric keys the way it does if you use uh, public keys. So Kerberos is using symmetric keys. All right, so how do they get around this problem of it not scaling? That's the trusted third party, okay? So they have this trusted third party, and every user is gonna share one key with the trusted third party. That's it. You don't share a key with all the other users. You just share a key with the trusted third party. Now, if I wanna talk to somebody else, 
we both have to, we have to go to the, this trusted third party and it will sort of arrange a meeting for us, right, so that we can share a session key and we can authenticate each other. Okay, that's the thinking. Okay. Uh, okay, so the trusted third party is the Key Distribution Center, or KDC. <coughs> okay, got that? The TTP, the KDC is the TTP. <laughs> Just getting started, morning. Uh, okay, so the KDC shares a key with Alice, call that K sub A. Cares, shares a key with Bob, call that K sub B. Key with Charlie, K sub C. Key with Dave, K sub B, so on. Now there's also one other special key in the system, K sub KDC, we'll call it, and this is known only to the KDC. Now you think, wait, the KDC is trusted, right? Nobody can hack into this, it's gotta be secure. Why would you have a key that only the KDC knows and nobody else knows? What could possibly be the point of that? You'll see, it's actually kind of a clever, not complicated, but a very clever uh, thing they did with that. Uh, okay, and they say the algorithm used here is DES. Oh, and I, well, okay. Uh, so, okay, another uh, term that comes up in Kerberos is the idea of tickets. And there's two kinds of tickets, okay? Um, there's this sort of master ticket that sort of gets you into the amusement park. We'll call that, <clears throat> I didn't make this up, okay, so don't blame me. We'll call that the ticket granting <laughs> ticket. <laughs> in other words, that ticket, that master ticket, sort of your credentials, that's what you use to get sort of ordinary <coughs> tickets. Like you, you go to Disneyland, right, you get this master ticket that gets you into the park. And then you want to ride on something, you get a speed pass or whatever it is, you know, to go ride on the ride. So you get like tickets, individual tickets to do things. You have to use that master ticket to get the individual tickets. Okay, who gives you the TGT? Well, it's the KDC, which is the TTP. Okay, got that? Okay, so ticket granting tickets come from the KDC the key distribution center, and that guy's you know, who you're trusting. Okay, so what's in the TGT? Uh, it has a session key, it has your ID, and all these things have an expiration time, which we'll ignore from here on out. Okay, it just complicates things from our perspective, but you need to realize these things don't last forever. You need to refresh them after, it's, it's like a matter of minutes. They don't last you know, uh, forever. Okay, the TGT, this is kind of a clever thing. Okay, so this ticket granting ticket, First thing you do, you log in, right? And you say, hey, I need my credentials, right? I need to do something, so I gotta get my credentials. That's the TGT. So you go to the KDC, you say, hey, give me a TGT. It gives you something, it creates something, but the thing it creates is encrypted with this key. Okay. So who knows this key again? KDC. Only the KDC. Hey, why would it encrypt something? What it does is it encrypts it with that and sends it back to you. Why would you send you something that you can't even read, right? That's right, okay, so when you actually want to do something, you present it to the KDC, and the KDC that can, can then decrypt it, and it has all the important information about you in there. Well, okay, so what's the point of that? What would be the benefit of that? Certainly it might work, but why would there be any benefit to doing, to doing this? Well, that's true. So somehow we're gonna have to go through the KDC when we want to do something, but why does it give me this ticket? I mean, an alternative would be the KDC just says, oh, you know, Mark Stamp's in the system now. I'll just, you know, put an entry in the database here that he's in and here's his keys and stuff. Why send it to me? He doesn't have to remember, exactly. It makes him stateless, right? So it's really what's going on here is it's a way to take this database of information that the KDC has to remember and give it to you. It's your job to remember it. When you want to do something, you present it to the KDC and then it instantly remembers everything it needs to remember about you. So it's a very simple concept, but it's actually very useful and very clever. In fact, at my startup company, we had a similar problem. You know, assuming we'd ever actually had customers, you know, we would have had this information that we had to keep track of for every customer. It would have been, a, you know, with millions of customers that we were planning on, you know, we would have had this enormous database of stuff to keep track of. Uh, and then that would have been, a, you know, a, a, a huge bottleneck, potential bottleneck. So we set up this system where we took the important information, encrypted it, sent it to the user. Whenever they wanted to do something, they passed that back to us and we decrypted it and we remember all the stuff we need to know. Okay.
So it's a clever concept, okay, very useful uh, idea. Uh, okay, so let's see how this works, okay? Now, another very nice feature of Kerberos is that it, from the user's perspective, it's completely transparent. You just show up, you enter your username, you enter your password, everything else happens behind the scenes. And on the local network, everything gets authenticated, everything's integrity protected, and you know, confidentiality is applied. So anything you do, you talk to another user, that's protected, you send email, it's protected, you, you know, print a file, all that stuff is protected. Okay, so here's the idea. So Alice logs into her computer. Her computer derives her key K sub A. Now who knows the key K sub A? Alice and the KDC. That's the key she shares with the KDC. It's just based on the password. So that com your computer just hashes your password, gets the key K sub A, the KDC already knows it. Okay, now we use K sub A to get our TGT. So we go to KDC, we get our credentials, and now we're ready to actually do something. Uh, and we can do whatever we want with that. So a big plus here is that it's transparent, okay? From Alice's perspective, she doesn't have to do anything special, just what she would ordinarily do. A negative, I suppose you could say, is the KDC. The KDC is trusted. The KDC is not functioning properly, the whole thing breaks down. Okay, now in practice, in the real world, what is the KDC? So, yeah, it's that server locked away in the closet there that nobody gets to touch, right? <laughs> because if anybody touches it, they might break it, right? Okay, so it's got to be protected in that sense. Okay, so here's the picture. Uh, we've got Alice. We've got uh, her computer here. What does Alice do first? Well, what does Alice usually do first? She logs into her computer, gives her username and password. The computer then goes to the KDC and says, hey, Alice wants a TGT. Uh, the KDC sends back the following. It creates a session key, S sub A, okay, it gives that to Alice. It takes, it creates a TGT and encrypts it, and it's all encrypted with the K sub A. So Alice's computer knows K sub A, so it can decrypt that, get the session key, it will remember the session key, it will remember the TGT, and get rid of everything else. K sub A doesn't need anymore. Okay, so what's in the TGT? Uh, okay, it says the identity. Okay, who does this belong to? Uh, it's encrypted, and, and the session key that the computer's going to remember, okay, that, so it can communicate securely, and it's encrypted with this key, okay, so KDC. Again, who knows this key? KDC. Only the KDC, so only the KDC can decrypt this. Okay, so now we've got our credentials. We're ready to actually do something. 